unexpected sight. I don't feel like sketching. Craig said last year this was the biggest cruise ship in the world. On the rooftop of the apartment building, we've oh, just seen the loveliest view. Might have to come up here and attempt some sketching tomorrow. We've just come out of the um, museum, the Disney Museum, um, and I'm feeling really happy because uh, the floor, the second floor, first floor, with all the lovely paintings, um, they're all covered because there's so much work going on in there. Um, so no art, oh, no lovely paintings. Lots of um, Roman artefacts ancient pots, lots of um, history, but no paintings to be seen. Never mind. Oh, and um, one cruise, the monster left, and this one, <laughs> three have taken its place. Today we found the watchtower with the best panoramic views and the first camera obscura in Spain. The camera obscura projects a real and moving image of the panoramic views at that precise moment. It's like being inside a photo camera. It lasts for about 15 minutes. You're in the dark room and it's incredible. It's projected onto a circular disc that they can tilt they can bring it up and down to adjust the focus. It was absolutely fantastic. Most of the watchtowers were built in the 17th and 18th century when Cadiz was the official entrance port of all arriving merchandise from America. Lots of merchants meant lots of watchtowers. And you can see them dotted around this amazing view. They have one very long street, which you can see on the right just now. Long and straight street, which is crisscrossed by so many alleyways and interesting areas within the city. The main wealth of Cadiz came from trading with America.
These little birds had such personality. I love the way they just scoot along. And I tried to catch something of them in the sketchbook. And I thought they really suited those collaged pages. Here, another attempt at boat paintings. Some work out, some don't, but it doesn't really matter. We walked all the way out to that distant area. There's a lighthouse. <laughs> really, really like these wader boots. I fancied having a go in those. <laughs> Here are the boat pictures then. And just for the fun of it, I thought I'll do the seagull. We're early enough to see some of the setting up. A little roof tent, one table, one cloth, and then they bring in their trolleys, loaded with their wares. Here come some more guys so coming in from all directions. There are many squares in the city and I think this cathedral square is probably the largest of them all. You can climb the tower to have a view closer to the Atlantic um, but still seeing all around. We kind of expected there to be steps but it's quite smooth and I'm fast forwarding this. I hope it doesn't make anyone feel too giddy but it did go on away. <laughs> I was huffing and puffing up to the very top. Oh, we nearly there. So on we go. That's getting bigger more as we more go. More light pouring in. They have a real problem with the cathedral. The salt, it's called the salt curse. Some of the stone is crumbling. And I think, I hope, the restoration is ongoing. It's the most beautiful building. It's very mellow inside, a very lovely atmosphere. home home good to be home very seasonal very wet here not freezing cold everything looks very lush very green the leaves have come down so much i thought i'd recap and i thought i'd just go over what i take when i travel we travel light because it's easy i'll i'll put the camera down and I'll just go through the few things that I do take. So, sketchbook, the inexpensive brush I bought, the gouage Matau, Matou, M-A-T-O-U is the brand, little 12 mil tubes. I take in my little zippy pouch, I couldn't be without this little thing, it's fantastic. 
I love it. You can't overfill it, which is quite a good thing because I find in my bigger pencil cases, there's just almost too much. So I carry a pencil sharpener. I take a, stab a Stabilo, a Woody. For anyone that doesn't know, they can go down. Let's just take some clean paper. They'll go down dry. I can move that with water. And then if I go into it, I love going into the wet. So that's the wonderful effect you get with the woody. This is my little stubby bit of Caran d'Ache watercolour pencil. So again, I can put water down and I can get an effect from that. I can draw. I quite like just wetting the end to draw. This is a Derwent Inktense pencil. So it's, um, what's the colour on this? Oh gosh, I can't, I can't see the colour. I had to snap it in half to get it in there because it's quite long. But the Inktense pencil, you won't get any movement. So when you don't want your mark to bleed, that's quite handy. A spare ink for my Lamy ink pen. It's the feel of the Lamy. I love these things. So your Lamy ink will obviously run. This is another little cheapy brush that I picked up on a trip. There's quite scratchy little things, but you can shift, you can shift the water around. Lemongrass and ginger tea. I'm yet to order that online, <laughs> a note. And this I bought, pure liquid ink. It's a Pilot pen and it's a 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And I thought it was permanent, but there is some degree of run. My Uniball is a black Uniball and I use a fine. The Uniball is permanent. Where would I be without my Uniball pen? So all my writing and drawing in notebook, I can't go anywhere without, if I could only have one pen, it would be a Uniball pen. And there's no move, there's no shift on that. And that's it. Your real minimal kit for me is just that. Um, I'm going to share, I've got some new glasses. They're a bit wacky, but I thought I'd give them a try and see what they look like on camera. In my notes book, in amongst my notes, these were the chairs in the little apartment. And I made up my mind to keep having a little practice. And the back was too long, too short. The legs were all over the place. They were really wayward on, on one point. So facing different directions. <laughs> A very funny front leg there. Another two. <laughs> A bad, this was a bad, a bad day. A bad little draw. And then I thought also, oh, the trainers, the plimsolls are down by the chair. Diabolical. And one not too bad and one pretty diabolical, but they had socks stuffed in them and I couldn't interpret the socks very well. So what I wanted to say by sharing that is that I'm, I'm becoming more and more accepting of the poor drawings. They have their own charm. I can remember clearly, more clearly, the bad drawings put me in time and place because it amused me that I just that morning I just couldn't make the legs work on the chair. Be accepting of all that you do. Don't get rid of anything because all of it is informing. So I also accept that I have a sketchbook and it's not perfect and my sketchbooks will never be perfect but what they will be is they will be packed with ideas. Every page holds a memory. There are pages in here that are completely unfinished. I know something still can come. It's like having 
the germ of an idea sometimes. It's like sowing seeds and something will grow from the pages in here. I included my worst boat paintings and the most pleasing to my eye was that one. But it doesn't matter. That's, that's the point I'm just trying to make. Embrace all of it because all of it counts. I've opened my mind and I don't, I don't have that need for perfection anymore. I'm reading the comments that so many of you struggle to be, to find perfection. Just trust me, gems will come if through not worrying about being perfect. I see my struggles, but I see the way forward. I craved some paint and the best we could come up with were these really inexpensive gouache tubes. I've used gouache, I have gouache, I've used them before, but never have I used them in this way. I used the little tray that they came with, the plastic tray, squeezed out, mixed colours in that little tray and lots of water and it made me start thinking, oh, maybe I'll go way way back I did so many classes in watercolour so I have really rusty watercolour techniques packed away in the subconscious somewhere and they were starting to come out I'm wanting to stick with the gouache in a watery way because I think they're more pigmented I think this for me is the cross between watercolour and acrylic I really really like them they're op opaque they're very opaque if you want them to be so a revelation to me to be washing them down. Just immense good fun. If I don't end now, I won't get this uploaded for tomorrow, for Thursday. In the next few days, I will record a little demo of using these gouache paints. Um, I'm excited to get some watercolour paper out and I'm going to have a look through my small collection and see if I've got a watercolour sketchbook for better paper. I'm, I, I'm keen to see what I can get on a different quality of paper and just uh, re-engage, re-engage with everything that I love in the cabin. It's so kind, people say they love my space and I love my space and I'm so grateful that I have this space. It's fantastic. Um, that will all come next week. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've had a fantastic time. It's so interesting just seeing what you're going to discover. So for me, this trip was boats and birds. Boats and birds. I really love the birds pictures. Seagulls and those beautiful, someone will tell me if I'm wrong, but I think those birds were black turnstones and they are related to sandpipers. Oh, I, I might have that completely wrong, but they were a thrill, a real thrill to me. More birds. Have whatever you're up to. Um, if you've got some old gouache hanging around, that's the other thing with the gouache. When they dry in the, tra in the palettes, when they, they don't dry up in the way acrylic dries up and you can't re, you can't reinvigorate it, I could reinvigorate these when they were dried up with a bit of water. I, they just blew me away. Um, so yeah, I'll have a go with those next week. Whatever you're up to, have a fantastic week. Thank you as always for lovely comments, encouragement and all that really good stuff. Have a great week everyone and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Come on, run.